many of the um, monasteries for Saint, of St. Clair's uh, are enclosed. And uh, enclosed just means that they live together. They are a unit. They do everything together. Uh, but the world comes in. So they're not cut off from the world, but the world comes to them. They do go out. They do leave the monastery. Uh, not often. But it's not a restricted thing. It's not where they have to stay here. They want to. And there's a big difference there. Sometimes I think people, young people, people in their 30s, 40s, wonder, you know, just like that old song, what's it all about, Alfie? <laughs> what is it all about? Well, you do something for 20, 30 years. And, you know, you wake up and you think, well, you know, is that, is that all there is? I mean, I was in my 50s when I joined this community. And I wasn't ever thinking about being a contemplative sister in a monastery. I always thought that I would get married and have a family. Uh, I never thought about being a religious. I had probably had six, six fellows who would have liked to have married me through the years. My brother told me point blank, he said, I don't understand, but I want you to be happy, but I don't understand. I was scared, and I thought it was, I was pretty sure it was what God wanted, but I just couldn't picture myself a nun. It was, it was so hard. It was so hard. I ended up deciding to work for myself. So I bought a dog van, went door to door, grooming dogs, and I did that for 10 years. I ended up listening to audio tapes of the Bible. And there's many good things to do with your life in the world, many. You know, I'm not, I don't want to downplay that at all. Before I knew it, um, I was really being changed and I was being drawn out of the world of the sense of the things that used to interest me, such as the TV, the noise. Um, I just wanted to find more peace and quiet. I was exactly the nun type. I, mean, I was kind of pondering this whole thing. I was in tune with what God was asking of me. It just amazes me how God puts people into our lives and puts us in places where things will happen. And we don't, in retrospect, it's all very clear. Just made me want to go more deeper into where God's leading me. But when you're going through it, you can't see where it's all leading. He was saying, and I could hear in the back of my mind, and then you wake up 15, 20 years later, and you wonder what happened. It all fell apart. And I immediately broke down and cried. This really came out of nowhere. I was 50-something. And, and having been married with children, so I thought, oh, well, I was just kidding. And uh, I let it go for a while until the priest uh, that I was talking to, I, I just dumped this all out on him. And he said, oh, no, I know some place you could try. Call these ladies in New Jersey. By looking on the internet is how I discovered the sisters. And I just knew this sounded right. So I came. The first reaction was, well, you know, you've had a very active life. You've been a lawyer. You've been active in your community. You've got children and grandchildren. And, and I'm not sure you're going to take to this life. But come in for an interview. And it was a comfortable, relaxing uh, time together, shared. And I just went forward from there. Sometimes a person will start at one house and they have to try, try several houses. I'm from Trenton. I came here first. My whole idea is, well, let me try it out and see. If it doesn't work here, maybe I'll try someplace else. There's 12 of us here. And, well, there's 13. Our sister Natalie's in the infirmary. And uh, it's very hard. It can be very hard for 12 women to live together and to get along. And so that's part of our... Uh, discipline and part of our penance and part of our joy. I don't have any sisters, so blood sisters, but I have 12 sisters here. We have somebody that came for a month. She didn't last one week. She could not stay there another week, but it was good for her to find that out before and then yeah. come and then find out, oh, you know. <laughs> Coming into this life was not what I expected. I expected the, um, I expected what probably most people expect from what they might have seen on TV, heard about religious life in the past. All of a sudden I had this realization that I could say yes. My good friends all said, 
you got to be kidding. Contemplative community? <laughs> and one of my dear friends said, don't drive yourself, take the train. Because then you can't leave in the middle of the month. You will see what it's like. How do you really learn to let go of status? You know, lawyers like their corner offices and, you know, the credenzas and all the stuff. Okay, well, that all had to go. Um, I was writing legislation. So, I'm coming to this place where I'm going to be quiet and pray all day. People tried the guilt trip because I have children and grandchildren. I have two sons. And they were married. They had wives who had mothers. And at this point, of course, I had to tell my mother what I was doing. Okay, I don't know if, if any of this is... She was very much opposed to my entry. Um, she didn't stand in the way. She just made her displeasure known. Like, why can't you stay in the world? And it's like, okay, why can't I stay in the world? I've been in the world. Been there, done that. And about halfway through my first year, she didn't want to talk to me anymore. And then she died that November. I entered in January. So it was heartbreaking, but yet the good Lord let me get used to not having her to talk to. Poor Claire communities are about prayer and work. One of the things that I found hard is you have work to do, and then the bell rings and you have to drop everything and then go. Then when you come back, sometimes you, you think, well, where was I? So you l lose maybe 20 minutes trying to get back to where you were. And, and it is nice to go. It, not nice, but it is our life. Even when we're, um, we're working, we're supposed to be focused on God. Our main job is prayer. We do the, yeah. we do the liturgy of hours, which is basically all day long and this is the our work periods we have uh, morning and afternoon work periods this shows who the shopper is to go with the cook for the following week <laughs> and thank you for my, the graciousness of my sous chef coming over to help me. We do some simple plumbing. We don't do electrical work. We do some simple electrical work. But we're pretty self-sufficient. We don't mow the lawn. <laughs> But we take care of other things in the yard. Most of the stuff here I've gotten from other parts of the monastery. It's easy to grow it. It's not easy to keep it because of the deer and the other varmints. Squirrels dig up the bulbs. Rabbits and deer eat the hostas and everything else. So they're not supposed to like rosemary. So that's what's going in here. Because mm. I try to use natural methods of keeping them away. Mm -hmm. I used to use dryer sheets and pantyhose and then um, old CDs, you know, to flicker, and they didn't get the memo. So. We're here to pray for the church. We're here to praise God, and we do that, but we also do it with work involved. It's not all um, meditative prayer. People think we're on our knees all day praying, but um, we do work in silence for the most part, and we do manual work, like working in the altar bedroom. Uh, that's our uh, probably our main source of income. We have about 60 or 70 to go out once a month, and the rest are call-ins. They call when they need them. You have three new messages. Hi, I'm calling. I need two cases of small host sent to our address at 126 44th Street. 
Okay, when you get a chance, if you can give me a call back to make sure you get the message. Thank you very much. Bye. I'd like to request for the next six months to not send any large posts, uh, just the large ones, for the next six months. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions, give me a call. Bye. We we have a we have a clientele of about you know just mostly in New Jersey New Jersey diocese like Hamden and Patterson and Trenton and Metuchen and we even have a couple in West Virginia and maybe a couple in Pennsylvania and maybe a couple in New York but mostly in the New Jersey area. Carl Barth said, "If you do theology, you must have." the Bible in one hand, and the newspaper in the other. <laughs> in this way, we can stay in touch with the world and really bring all of that to prayer. So we're very attuned to what's happening in Trenton, in our city, in the larger city of Philadelphia and New York. And um, again, that's, that's all part of our prayer then. And Claire, too, even though she was enclosed in her monastery, she was aware of of what was going on in Assisi. People from Assisi came to the door and asked her to, for cures. We do have the internet, and so we know what's going on. So uh, being cloistered doesn't mean we don't know what's going on in the world. And they also think cloister means that you never go out. And they'll say, well, I thought you were cloistered. I thought you don't go out. Well, so there, and some of them you want you back in the cloister and not to go out because it, you should be praying for them. One time I was at the store and this little girl said to her mother, uh, is that Sister Act? Because she thought that was the name of the sister. Sister, her last name was Act. And so the mother said, it was really cute, she said, you go ask her if she's Sister Act. <laughs> So I said, no, I'm Sister Florence. And she said to me, you, you are the first one I met, except for Sister Act. I said, I'm very happy. This is back before I came in the old building, and they, uh, they would have the workmen come in. This is when they were in the old habits and stuff, and they would put their veils down. And one of the sisters would take the workmen to wherever he had to go, and she would ring a little bell, the other sisters would be just getting out of the way. They'd go in and they'd kind of hide in the next room or something. So when he was finished, she brought him down to the lobby. She said to him, now how much do we, do we owe you? He says, not the lady, just let me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> Many times when we get a delivery, they can't wait to get inside to see what's going on here. what's going on. We're not the quietest monastery in the Federation. <laughs> we do have our uh, struggles with silence, <laughs> let's say, but we enjoy each other and uh, we're very strong on community. So what we're doing is making baby blankets to send to Cincinnati to the sisters that work in the hospital and they give them to the poor newborns. And then sometimes we make blankets for our family. I can't talk and chew gum at the same time. Well, you don't have to, but you have to crush it. Yeah, well, I can't do that either. <laughs> can't drive and talk. <laughs> this one is for Florence's niece who's having a baby. Great niece is having a baby. The great niece or great great niece? Well, the baby will be the great great niece. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Once or twice removed. <laughs> no, not removed. I've come into a family and I share my life experiences with them. They share theirs with mine. As if, you know, in a family we share, we eat meals together, we laugh. It's a real blessing to be able to share with people their spiritual journey and what they've, what they've gone through. And so many, you will not meet one person. You may think they have the most perfect life, but once they share with you, you find out there's all kinds of crosses that they have, or that they've endured, or that they're working through. And there's nobody that isn't carrying, or has carried, or will carry some kind of cross. I think the prayer.
prayers like the ripples in a, in the water and it just goes out and it's really sad some of, some of the uh, letters we get they either call for prayers or they uh, like the telephone or they send letters we can feel people's pain and a lot of people call in for prayers um, cancer patients people are struggling with their families people who are addicted I mean you can you can understand and we sympathize with them but we pray for them also and uh, God does answer prayer maybe not always the way we want him to but he does answer prayer and he does listen even if it's not you know even if they're not cured from cancer or something emotionally they might be more at peace I do spiritual direction it's so humbling you know and I find that people are so um, so open and so so good <laughs> if anybody wants to talk to any of the sisters you know they can do that it is a home and it feels like a home a when you when you're welcomed in you feel very comfortable you don't feel like you're going into a foreign space mm -hmm. um, I mean and I'm Jewish and it's very comfortable for me you know I don't I don't have any second thoughts about it or discomfort at all about it. When I was young and I, did, yeah, I just, just didn't know them, they had this mystique about them that they were, they were something just unknown. But once I've gotten to know them, I, you realize they're just normal, individual, happy people. And it's not just happy, there's a joy here. They all have great senses of humor and they laugh very easily. The next thing you know, two hours have gone by and, and you have laughed a lot. And you haven't stopped talking. <laughs> and, and there's lots of laughter, time. right? Yeah. I mean, we, we always um, we, we really enjoy the visits. We go from one topic to another. And it is just very, very refreshing. And that's how I feel when I leave one of my visits here. I feel refreshed. Learning how to live as a disciple. Now, there's lots of ways of doing it. This is one way of doing it. And if you are already a quiet person, then this would feel very much um, comfortable. Um, if you were somebody that I used to be like, which was whew, type A, it's time to take a change um, and to realize that you can't, you, there is another part of you, there is another side of you, there's your, your inner introvert. Death isn't really a sorrowful thing for us because that's what we're here, to go to God. And so when we go, that's, you know, that's what our and destination we, is. Yeah, and we help each other reach that uh, point. Like with Sister Natalie, she just got up one day and couldn't stand. It happened very quickly. We all take turns. Everyone who can, which is pretty much just about everybody, that takes turn either feeding her or helping her in some way. You'll notice the uh, graves um, in front of the granite uh, plaque. They're all our sisters that died since we came to this property. So each one has a story and um, we journeyed with them just as we are with Natalie uh, now. So it, this is really sacred ground for us and um, it's wonderful to be in. It's almost like a cathedral of trees out here. Well, I'm getting ready to prepare the food for Sister Natalie. She has to have it nice pureed sort of, so that she can eat it. I'm going to take it over there. Do you remember being Abbas? Yeah. And what was, what was hard about being an abbess? Oh, gee, I don't know. I 
guess there's things that were unpleasant. And then, that you had to do? Yeah. Mm. I bet. Mm. Lots of personnel work you have to do as an abbess, huh? Did you, did you have to do anything like that? Yes, I did. Mm. I did, and it is difficult. Mm. Yes. But God's always with us. For me, it's um, it's a quiet joy. It's uh, it's something that uh, uh, eternal life. Uh, Claire, Saint Claire asks us to cast our eyes on the mirror of eternity. So it's um, e eternity is really now. It's not just when you're born or when you die. All right, my dear. Here's some coffee. It should be cool enough. Ready? Is that cool enough? I think so. Okay, good. Here we go. Nobody likes to watch anybody go downhill, so we tend to send people to nursing homes and, you know, other places. And there's reason for that if you're working, because you can't spend the time, and care is expensive, but the Claire's do it at home because we take care of our sisters up until the very end. Claire did that. I mean, she washed the mattresses of the six sisters. All right, my dear, I'm going to go get ready for Mass, okay? Oh, yes, this mass is really fast, my goodness. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. It sure is. It'll start in about 15 minutes. Mm. Right, close to it. Okay. Mm. All right, and then I think Nellie will be back to bring you communion, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, my dear. All right. See you later. See ya. So it's, it's when we come out, um, it's like visiting the sisters, but... It's part of the ground on which we all dwell and live in the presence of God, so it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> I'll put some music on for you, Natalie. She likes classical music. You know, we freely chose choose to come here and and if you cooperate with the grace, if you, if you, um, the whole thing of gospel living is love. That's what Claire teaches us. She, um, she didn't give up that, that desire to live the gospel life, to live poorly, to depend totally on God. This is a life of prayer, and you, you, um, you know, you deny yourself things, things, but you get riches riches beyond what you can put in your back pocket or store in your room. And then I visited other monasteries just to visit. I'm thinking, this is where I wanted to be the most. I like the tease about, you know, it was handed to me on a silver platter. I mean, it worked out. I think my family thought I might last about two weeks, so they didn't give me any static. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone very quick, even though I've been here, I believe, 19 months right now. Each day is different. Um, and that's how I take, take this life, just one day at a time. I came. I can't say that it's all been bed of roses, because it's not. Not when you've been used to having your own life, your own business. You know, it's, it's just not perfect. But it's, I mean, for me, all of the hard parts are... They disappear when I remember that I'm here for Jesus. I'm here for him to work on me so that I can give to other people. You know, whether it's my friends, my family, people that call, people that come to the door. Um, my first husband committed suicide, so I've had some familiarity with that whole thing. Uh, some years later, my nephew did as well. So we've had people that come and, and they feel completely guilt-ridden. And it's a little bit more credible if you can speak from a place of experience. I've learned a lot, whether it be music, um, sewing, gardening, uh, and just enjoying nature and having the time to read. And I've grown. I've grown so much 
by their witness, by their life experiences that they shared with me, and how I'm growing in prayer and community w along with them. Some people might just have a bent another way and might ask themselves, is this really what I, wa what I want to be about in life? You know, do I want something that's, that's more to my um, inner life, that's more nourishing to my inner life? So that, that is how I quickly, through um, describing my life, that's how I've come to be here today. You know, I've often thought that if if women knew the kind of life we really had here and how wonderful it is, they'd be beating down our doors to get in. 